Dearest Texas History Scholars, today we're going to make a study guide for Unit 4. Unit 4 was about Mexican colonization. and the impresario system. This goes from about 1821 to 1835, which was a year before the Texas Revolution. There were three major things that we looked at. And the first of those was the Mexican War of Independence. That's super important. The next thing was the impresario system. And then the third thing that we looked at was Mexican laws that related to early settlement of Texas. Those are super important, those three. Okay, the Mexican War of Independence was inspired by Father Hidalgo and the cry of Dolores. That actually happened in 1810, and then he died soon after that. But Mexico does end up winning that war. They won their independence from Spain in 1821. The next thing that we talked about was the impresario system. Moses Austin comes to Texas during the Mexican War of Independence and he gets permission from Spain to settle in Texas, but then Mexico wins the war and Moses Austin dies. And so there are several people in our chapter that become impresarios. But the first of those, well, I'm going to draw an arrow here. So the first person that tried to come was Moses Austin. But then he died and he ends up sending his son as his dying wish. And his son is Stephen F. Austin. More about that in a moment. Okay, uh, most of these impresario grants were located in the coastal plains because that's where they could grow crops with the, like not, it wasn't easy, but it was like easier than other regions of Texas. And so that is the coastal plains of Texas. And it's, it was still hot there. So they're still gonna have to adapt to the environment of Texas. And they do this by building breezeway homes. 
We saw one of those in the movie Old Yeller. And then <clears throat> they made their homes from local resources. So in the coastal plains, that would look like timber or um, like log cabins and that kind of thing. So breezeway homes use local materials. That's how they adapted to the environment of Texas. And then the reason that they came to Texas, we're talking about like Anglo settlers and also Hispanic families was because of cheap land and also cash crops. Um, some requirements for settlement. Anyone that came to Texas, there were three requirements. They had to become Catholic. They had to become Mexican citizens. And they also had to be of good moral character. That's a hard thing to screen for. And as far as we know, they weren't actually checking if people were becoming citizens. They weren't checking if they were Catholic. And so on top of just having like an ambiguous request, like good moral character, they're also not checking. So that is a problematic requirement list. Today we have much more um, specific immigration laws. So Moses Austin comes to Texas first, then he leaves, he dies. Mexico wins independence from Spain. Stephen F. Austin comes to Texas and he brings the first Anglo settlers to Texas. This group is called the Old 300. Descendants of the old 300 are still around. They still celebrate the fact that they were part of that first group. Um, unfortunately, we know that the old 300 was the first of many Anglo groups that brought enslaved people to Texas. A friend of Stephen F. Austin's that helped locate the colony. Uh-oh, I'm going to run out of room here. A friend of Stephen F. Austin's that helped locate the colony was Erasmo Seguin, and he also helps create Mexican laws, which we're going to go to next. So he's a Tejano representative of Texas. Um, other people that we know of that came to Texas on impresario grants that are specifically listed in your notes and in the book, there was a lot of them. But Green DeWitt was one. And Green DeWitt establishes the town of Gonzales, Texas, which is where the Texas Revolution is going to start in our next chapter. Spoiler alert. Okay, the next um, one that was mentioned, the next impresario was, wait, I spelled this wrong. Okay, uh, it's Martin de Leon, so I'll just make that work. Martin, crap, I wrote that twice. Sorry for saying a bad word. Okay, Martin de Leon, came to Texas and he establishes the town of Victoria, Texas, which grew to be a pretty decent sized city for that area of Texas. Okay, next thing that we need to look at is Mexican laws. Uh, first of all, Mexico was established like all the laws were pretty much set by 
the Mexican Constitution. of 1824 and the constitution said that the country did not have freedom of religion because the government and the people had to be catholic so it wasn't that they were trying to restrict religious freedom that just wasn't something that was offered in mexico okay freedom of religion and then we already know that's because the country is Catholic was Catholicism Catholic those words are similar um, the Constitution of 1824 and other Mexican laws also merged two Mexican states, and those were Coahuila, and then and in Spanish is E, so it merged Coahuila, E, Tejas. Texas later becomes Texas. There you go. Um, okay, wait, just like one more thing. The Mexican laws at this time are gonna work to limit, 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 and eventually get rid of slavery. Because most of the Anglo settlers coming into Texas were from the Southern states, that's gonna be an area of contention that people will have a hard time um, coming to an agreement on because Texans were likely to have slaves and want to keep those slaves. And so that creates a conflict, not just among settlers, but also among settlers and the Mexican government. Um, when I say that they limited slavery, I mean, they made rules to where like once an enslaved person was 14, then they were free. And then they were like, no, anyone that's born of enslaved people, they're free. And they just kept limiting it like that. Like no more enslaved people could be brought into Texas. You couldn't trade or buy or sell. And so they're just like limit, 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 limit. And they never actually put their foot down and said, okay, no more slavery at all. Okay, um, this does have some bonuses, which we will go over once I pause the video.